Welcome once again to the Church Solutions Podcast. My name is Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. Steve, how are you today? Doing great. Well, we're going to talk good. today. Thank you. I didn't mean to cut you off there, but, but uh, we're, we're, we're a tech company that, that works with churches and ministries, and, and we help people with tech. But we do other things, and one of the things we're going to talk about today is one of my favorite subjects. I know it's not yours, Steve, but mine is coffee. Oh, I love okay. coffee. You don't like coffee, do you, Steve? I thought you were going to talk about chasing your vision or no. uh, chasing the vision God gives you or something like that. No, something no. as lame as coffee. Huh? Coffee. Coffee. Yes. Well, actually, coffee, coffee smells great. I'm not a coffee drinker, though. No. Nah, we're sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll have to let that slide. I'm sure Jesus can forgive you. But look, uh, we are actually going to talk about vision, and we're going to talk about ministry because— <laughs> Uh, ministry is more than just what happens inside the church. And uh, we have a guest today who has a vision to, uh, to reach people and help connect people and help bring healing to people. And he's doing it through a, wait for it, coffee ministry. And his name is Jared Wright. Jared, how are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. All right. It's good to have you here. Thanks so much. Now, Jared is the founder of a uh, place here in Tucson, Arizona, which is where we hail from. And it's called Blessed Grounds. And it's a coffee. What, what, how do you, what, what exactly is it? Because it's not just a coffee shop. You actually yeah. do. Tell we us actually what you roast do. the coffee. So we're an actual coffee roasting facility. So we do have a cafe so people can come in and uh, they can order their favorite extraction method or drink and we actually have a roasting facility wow okay so uh let's talk a little bit about how this whole thing got going because you're you're a businessman uh you've been involved in businesses you're involved in your local church what church do you go to currently i'm going to victory worship center okay currently so do you move around quite a bit now kidding. with the coffee, actually, the Lord does. He has me go into different churches because we just establish the relationships, okay. uh, really, that are in their business. Uh, I've, I've given you a hard time. All right, so <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this, and 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 tell us how it got started and how it's a ministry to you. Well, uh, it was in tw- 2017, and I was in San Diego, California. I'm actually with a buddy getting probably one of the the toughest times of my life. And I'm just chasing after the Lord. I had an opportunity um, to use a timeshare in San Diego. Um, it was perfect opportunity and it worked as a sabbatical. I was able to leave work and really just press into the Lord. Um, we're driving, it was mission beach area. And all of a sudden I go into a vision, an open vision while I'm driving, mind you. I don't know if it happened in a matter of a minute, seconds, but Instantly, I saw basically, and let me just preface, I loved coffee at this time. I didn't know much about coffee. I would have never started my own business because I know the inherent costs involved. So I see this vision of us praying over coffee beans, the beans providing healing for the nations. I inherently knew things instantly. He gave me Ephesians 3.20, which says, All glory to God who is able through his mighty power within us accomplished infinitely more than we might ever ask or ever think. I saw two faces, and one face I instantly knew. I knew both of the people. One I knew was creativity, is how the Lord showed me. The other I saw is more of a partner. And then I knew that people were going to love working for the company. It was going to be a kingdom business. I knew right away that this business, I saw basically the only way I can describe it is lines going across the United States. I knew that it was going to turn into coffee shops around the country. And I knew that if it was going to be the Lord's, it had to be the best. So these are things that I instantly and inherently knew. And at that moment, that was, I believe, July 2017. After seeing this vision, I got back to Tucson. The gentleman that actually I saw his creativity, I told him about it. He didn't think I was crazy, but he instantly came up with the name Blessed Grounds. The other gentleman that I saw the face of, and I knew he was kind of a partner, um, I told about it. Once again, he got excited and has been very supportive ever since the inception. But I didn't do anything with it. So at that time, I kind of sat on it. I didn't know really what to do, kind of drug my feet. And at Victory Worship Center, I'm sitting in 
a service. It was a Wednesday night service and I'm in the overflow in the older building. So I can kind of see, you know, everybody downstairs. And there was a gentleman by the name of Jake Hamilton that came in and he's an amazing guy that really is tatted up and he's just a rocker. You know, he's got long hair like you. And uh, he just loved to rock out and just just love on the Lord. And he'd go into these Muslim countries and just play, just play and worship the Lord. And people would come to, to know the Lord. Well, anyways, he's up there and he's talking and he says, you know, I'm kind of a geek. When I want to be with the Lord, I go to Disneyland because he lived in the, the Anaheim area. And he would go and sit outside of the castle. And one day the Lord and just journal and talk to the Lord. One day the Lord got his attention, highlighted the castle, and he looked up and he says, I gave this to one of my children first. And he says, what does that even mean, Lord? And he says, how many of you ever got a dream or a vision for something inventive, like cre creative, and you didn't do anything with it and it came to be? And all these hands rose up and he says, okay, keep them up. And he says, look around. So I'm on the overflow and I'm looking at all these hands up instantly, the conviction in my heart, when the Lord gave me this vision about coffee. And at that moment I said, Lord, whatever it takes, I'll do whatever it takes. The very next month, my wife and I were in Maui and uh, we were in a, a little town called Kihei and we we're at the Kihei cafe. And I tried this coffee that I loved and I wanted to buy it. So I bought a bag and it was, all dusty, which is another story. But anyways, uh, I bought this last bag and we were getting ready to leave the island and I wanted more of it to take back, but they didn't have any more. So I looked up on the bag and I found through uh, Apple Maps, the location of this place. So I'm driving to it and I'm kind of going through an industrial area. It's like off the beaten path. And I'm like, this is a weird place for a coffee shop. Well, I go to this, it's like a warehouse and I don't know anything about roasting. I walk into this warehouse and it is full of coffee beans and roasters and just people. The gentleman that meets me turns out to be the owner of the place. Mm -hmm. I share this vision with him. The Lord set me up. I share this vision with him. He's not a believer. So he looked at me like I was crazy for a while, <laughs> but he says, Hey, if you're serious about this, I can tell you're passionate about this. He's like, you have to get into the specialty coffee association I didn't know what that was. I jotted it down. And he says they meet every year in Seattle. They have a big convention. So I get back in Tucson and fast forward a little bit. Next thing I know, I'm researching. The Lord, does. he didn't let me sit on things very long. I'm researching specialty coffee. And I find out there's like three places in the United States that you can actually take classes. One of them's in Phoenix. So <laughs> out of all places, one of them's in Phoenix. So that January of 2019, uh, 2018, I'm enrolled in classes. I'm enrolled in sensory, green, and roasting classes. So I go up to, this is in Tempe. I go up to Tempe, and there's people from Colombia, people from Mexico, from all over. And they said, you know, the guy that's teaching, he is world-renowned. He's in the top 1% of what he does. That's why we flew all the way over here to be trained by him. It's amazing. So... Through the class, I became friends with the instructor, and I explained the vision to him. Once again, he's not a believer, so he looked at me like I was crazy. But he says, you know what? If you're serious about this, let me know, and I would like to help you out. Fast forward, we uh, hired him as a consultant. The Lord showed me that here's a gentleman that's been doing this for 30 years. He is literally in the top 1% of what he does in the world. He actually is an instructor for the Specialty Coffee Association, but people hire him Dubai, all over, all over the place, all over the United States. He, he travels and he's a consultant for people from not only the farming, the millworks, the extraction, the roasting. So we bring him in. The Lord showed me that his ceiling is going to be our floor. So he trained my roaster, who's another just amazing testimony that the fact that he's even here, um, my roaster, myself. And sure enough, in the matter of about five months, we are now, we have one of the largest accounts here in Tucson, which is into it. It's a, a, about a thousand employees. We're doing almost a couple hundred pounds of coffee a month for them. We are in about eight different churches. We're in a grocery store. 
We've linked up with the largest vending service company in the nation, also right here in Tucson, another vending service company, and we're in a bunch of businesses, and we're growing. Wow. wow. That's amazing. So um, it reminds me of a, a story. I have a good friend that's a pastor, and, and you're, the message that you were listening to back at Victory was how many people have these ideas, and, and, and then you later saw it come to be. Um, that's a challenge for just about everyone. Cause this pastor said, I got this great idea, Steve. He goes, here's this great idea. He says, you need to go and build it and do it. And I'll split all the income with you. And I am just laughing because, you know, people think that the vision or the idea is, is actually worth something, you know, worth half of a business. And, and it takes the, you know, being, you know, an entrepreneur myself, it takes the, the diligence to, to take the next step. So, I mean, it took you a couple of years to get motivated to take the next step, but you took, it's not that just next step, it's the next step after that. What's, what's, you know, what was the key to, you know, not letting this fade to, you know, a vision in the past? Steve, you know, it's, it's amazing and just that little quick synopsis that's not even the best part this is how amazing our god is so when he showed me praying over the beans and the beans providing healing for the nations we are currently right now through direct trade uh we are blessing over 13 small farms in over 10 different countries three different continents so the farmers are living in object poverty I sent my general manager to Honduras in February and he was immersed in the coffee culture for a little over a week and he got to meet the farmers, but he got to see these surrounding farms and how they're, that's the only work that they actually have. And they're literally feeding their family's dogs to survive. So we are able through special importers able to do something that's better than fair trade. It's called direct trade. We're circumventing the commodities market and we're being able to bless the farmers with over four to five times what they would make on the open market. We get a better quality bean because once again, if it's gonna be lowers, it has to be the best. Coffee is graded like wine. So wine is graded in points by a sommelier. Coffee is graded in points as well. Anything that is 79 and below is considered commercial grade. Anything that is 80 and above is specialty grade. Everything that we're dealing with is between the, the 83 and 86 currently. We're able to highlight the farmers, which you can see on our website, the actual individual farmers and bring them because all it, all it does is give the Lord glory. But on their hard work, we're able to highlight what they're doing and we're able to bless them. So when the beans come in, we literally pray over the beans. So when we're roasting the coffee, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it does, but that's what the Lord showed me. We pray over the beans. Now, it gets even better. It sounds like an infomercial. But when, when everything, so now we roast coffee and we have our cafe, 5% of everything that we do retail goes back into a nonprofit called Lighthouse in the Desert. We started a 501c3 the same year that we, uh, the Lord gave me this vision with Blessed Grounds. And weekly, we do outreach in the downtown area, Santa Rita Park, wherever the Lord leads us, we were able to do feed, clothe, give out hygiene items, and blessed grounds, the Lord showed me, is going to produce not only the income for the nonprofit, but it's they work hand in hand. Everything comes from God, through God, back to God. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, and he gives the provision for the vision. So now we've been able to partner in such a short time with Family Life Radio. We've given them 10% of the proceeds of the month of January of all of our retail. We partnered with Teen Challenge, who has brought us in, and we actually teach at the chapel uh, pretty much once a month. And we were able to do the same thing with them and write them a check. So here, in the matter of a short amount of time, as you know, with starting a business, we're not able to pay our bills by the money that comes in, and the Lord's telling me to give. To give. He says, freely you've been given, so freely you give. And it's returning you in the same manner that's pressed down, shaken together to make room for more that is spilling over into your lap. So now we are giving and we're partnering with local nonprofits. Not only do we have our own, but this not only blesses the farmer, but it blesses our local community. So to, 
to directly answer your question, um, it really was the nudge of the Holy Spirit um, in my quiet time, that conviction. And it, the Lord was so gracious with me and he was so patient with me. And it was almost like a tap. It was almost just like a tap on the shoulder. And the circumstances that happened, I, I can't even make this stuff up. I have testimony after testimony after testimony of things that cannot be explained with human reasoning. And they're, they're only divine. They're only divine. All because you said, yes, I'm going to move on this thing. All because it said yes. And the Lord says you did. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, one of the things was I still work a full-time job to pay for this. And we all have our nest egg. We all have our savings. And when the Lord called me to do this, I tried to get a business loan. And I, I don't share this very much. But I tried to get a business loan. And for a few months, I didn't even have enough money to pay my general manager. And I'm trying to get a business loan and I couldn't get it. It's a new business. It's a startup. And we didn't have anything coming in with. And the Lord, he, he spoke to me and just cut right to the heart of the issue. He says, you trust, you either trust me or you don't. Because I was, I was trying to put one foot in the door and test the, you know, or dip my toes in the water and test the waters before I jumped in. And he says, you either trust me or you don't. And I said, I trust you, Lord. This facility that we have, we have an amazing facility here, and it's all paid for. It's all paid for right now. And we're the Lord showed me that we were going to be a debt-free company, and we are not only growing, but he's bringing all the provision. We just have to unite the body. We just need more awareness. And that's why this is so amazing that you guys are actually going to bring exposure to this, because we need more awareness. Where are you on this journey? How long ago, how long has the business been in operation? You said we the didn't open was our in... doors. Yeah, go ahead. We didn't open our doors until the end of September of 2019. Of, of 2019. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> a lot is happening very quickly. Yes, sir. This is all, you're only three, four months into it then. Um, September, October, five, November. Yeah. It's so, about five. Yeah. <laughs> about five right. months. Uh, and it's a pretty good sized facility. I mean, uh, again, you've got, you roast the beans there. How, how large of a facility do you have? Is how, how many square feet? It seems we're looking at video here and you were showing us another area earlier. So you got yes. a pretty good sized area there. Yeah. The Lord really took care of us because, um, we're about, six, about 1600 square feet. And when I, when I was searching, as you can imagine, we all have ideas. We may make many plans, but the Lord determines our steps. I wanted to be off of Oracle. I wanted to be in front of everybody. Yeah. And then when I got the, uh, the pricing, I mean, it just was not feasible. So the Lord led us to this. We probably looked at over 70 different places. And this place has just been amazing. It's in a, a unique location. People kind of have to come out of our way. We're Grant in the freeway. Right. And but our roasting facility has been amazing. Um, and just to, to mention, we are now open seven days a week. We were mm -hmm. only able to open Monday through Friday, and then all of a sudden, the Lord put on my heart, we opened Saturdays, and that became our busiest day. And then I struggled because He had shown me this was going to be like Chick fil A, it was surreptitiously Him. When you come in, you'll see on the door it says taste and see. We know that Psalm 34a says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, when people come in, they don't know the Lord. They come in and they, they, it's not in your face, but they say, man, the energy is really good in here. And I just smile and I know to myself, it's just Jesus. You know, it's Jesus. It's the Lord. And we're now we're open Sundays. This is going to be our very, um, this coming Sunday will be our fourth Sunday open. And we do live acoustic music in the roasting facility. Mm -hmm. So we open it up to the public. They can come in. They can either hang out in the cafe area or they can drift back to the roasting facility. And we have worship leaders from all over the uh, Tucson. They're signing up and they come in and they do acoustic worship and people can just be with the Lord. So is this um, so people can obviously come to the facility. Do you sell online, too? Yes. So right now, the Lord showed me that this was going to spread via YouTube. We put out a YouTube video, and I've had orders from all over the United States, including Alaska. We've had people try and order from Canada. We're not able to ship to Canada yet. And as far as Russia, 
um, through social media, we've had people post uh, to our social media from Israel, from Russia with our coffee. And the Lord is just, he's expanding this. There's nothing that we're doing marketing wise. Um, and we're getting orders from all over the United States. So, so speaking of online, let, let me jump in here, Steve. Uh, Steve and I have been doing this for years and we still step on each other when we're talking. <laughs> uh, it's just our thing. It's our shtick. Uh, blessedgrounds.com. That, what I wanted to say, and you can get back in here, Steve, but what I wanted to say was blessedgrounds.com. That's the website. And there's yes. lots of good information on there. There's even some some products you can buy besides coffee and some other things. But go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry I stepped on That's you. you said we've been working together so long that you know what I'm thinking here. So that's right. That's exactly where I was going. So I was trying to find out where can people that so, are listening find more information and buy online. So, so blessedgrounds.com. And then also, it, that's probably the way to, to contact you, right? Uh, Jared, because uh, you have some way to contact people. I'm looking at your website right now. Uh, is there a contact thing on here somewhere where people can ask it, right? It's got to be yes. something. I don't see it, but I'm sure it's here somewhere. Where is it at? So oh, we have a an email. Yeah, yes, there's a phone number, and then we also have uh, a email on there as well so people okay. can reach out to us. Because I, there may be some people listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, depending on what we're on YouTube as well. Uh, they may have questions about, okay, you got this vision. It sounds wonderful, but they might want a little more detail. So, so they just need to contact you, go to the website, blessedgrounds.com. And, uh, they can contact Jared Wright, who's been our guest today. And you will happily share with you, share with them some more insight. Absolutely. If I can, is it okay to share one quick testimony? Sure. Absolutely. So one of the very first churches that partnered with us is Ore Valley Church of the Nazarene. Yeah. And when I sat down with them and I explained what we're doing, they said, this is a no brainer. Our goal is missions oriented. And they were in the process of building a, a new facility and a cafe. So we were able to partner with them. When you walk into their church, their cafe is Blessed Grounds at OBCN. Since we've been doing coffee for them, their coffee pre- consumption has quadrupled plus but not only that the pastor came to me and he says jared this has changed the way that we do church people are not they're not just leaving after the service they're hanging out they're they're communing together quinonea fellowship and they're hanging out with each other they have more volunteers than they've ever had for the cafe and we do little pop-up events there and there's quite a few great testimonies, but I had a gentleman come up to me and he says, you know, I've been coming here for over 10 years and I've been drinking the coffee. There was nothing brother. There was nothing even good to say about the coffee. I could barely drink it, but I tell you what, I've had three cups a day. This is the best coffee I've ever had. And we get these, the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It's living by his power. Right. And it's not food or drink. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And through all these things, through the guise of coffee, we get to spread the gospel. So it's not just that we're here trying to sell coffee. We actually get to represent him in such a way to not only the farmers, but also to all the patrons that come in here. They get really the truth about the gospel which it is his kindness. It is the Lord's Christos that caused men to repent and come back to Jesus. So once again, we want to really partner with churches around the country. We want to go in and actually help them facilitate not only the, the, their coffee, um, their cafes, so their espresso, but also their drip coffee. And that's what we're really set up to do as well. I think it's a wonderful a wonderful vision, and it's 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 just a wonderful concept. And and uh, I'd encourage our listeners to uh, to to reach out and and even consider something that your local church could do. Maybe not what Jared has done exactly, but maybe something similar. And hey, you got a source here now for coffee. Yes. And I have not had your coffee, so I have to go check it out. I definitely. will. I will definitely do that. What's your opinion on decaf? We have an amazing decaf. So decaf coffee, all coffee, even decaf coffee still has caffeine. Um, but our decaf, you wouldn't notice the difference. We actually put it on the cupping table and it's from Colombia. It gives 
kind of a, its cupping flavor profile is banana bread. So this particular farm uses a, an enzyme from a banana peel to naturally remove the caffeine, and it's amazing. So I like caffeine personally, but for those yeah. that can't tolerate it, we have an amazing decaf. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a big uh, decaf, for, but I do have it occasionally, like if it's late at night, you know, I might have some, but but some. I just wanted to get your professional opinion on that, uh, Jared. All right. Well, look, we're, we're out of time here. Uh, Steve, any last minute thoughts before we wrap? No, that's it. It's session? been great. Right. It's been great. It's been exciting, Jared. It's... Jared Wright's been our guest. Yes. And, Thanks uh, for having me. And uh, I think he's a testimony of what you can do when you get a vision from God and you don't just sit on it. But you do begin to make some moves, moves on it. You begin to take some steps. And I think uh, as you were sharing with us earlier, Jared, I mean, you know, you, you start taking some steps. You start moving. Yes. And God will continue to open doors and give you direction. And uh, I can, my, my personal experience is that you start following what you feel like God's vision is. And, you know, many times the door is shut. And it, it, that may, be not, may not be God if the door is shut. Or you may yes. have some obstacles, you know. But... Uh, but anyhow, we'll let you discern that. So, so Jared, again, thanks a lot. The website is blessedgrounds.com. And if you just want to go to us and ask us questions, we can forward you uh, information or forward questions to Jared. Just send us an email at support at streamingchurch.tv. That's, that's one of our companies, streamingchurch.tv. You reach out to us, and we'll be happy. We'd love to get your feedback on this as well, as always. And so... We're out of time. So, Jared, again, thank you so much for your time today. You. We sure appreciate it. And, Steve, thank you for yours. Thank you. And uh, we will be in touch with you. Thanks again, folks, for your time. Thanks for the pri privilege of your time. Uh, we sure appreciate you spending a little bit of time with the Church Solutions Podcast. We're done. We're out of here. Take care. We will see you again next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care. <laughs>